It is the morning show at East Coast at 0877-11103. Ronan Coveney joins us now. And Ronan has been following up a story that we covered here on the programme. It was about Gareth Jemison, who is from Rath New, and his difficulty of accessing the number 133 bus um, to Bray. And uh, there's all sorts of developments with this. And the unfortunate thing was we didn't get anybody to come on air um, apart from um, Gareth himself and... And uh, John Snell, uh, the uh, local politician, um, but Bus Aaron and uh, the National Transport Authority are not really interested in, uh, beyond sending in statements. Now, I don't know if there's anybody, of course, with a physical disability in those particular organisations that can give us a perspective, but we just it, we don't know because we just never got a chance to talk to them. But Ronan's been following up this story. Good morning, Ronan. Yeah, Deco. Well, unfortunately, as you said, we're unable to speak to anyone from these organisations, so we decided to change tack a little bit and we said we go around to wheelchair users around the county and see what their experience is, is using the public transport in County Wicklow, in particular on the 133 and also Declan as well, we decided to look at the trains as well, because there's another issue there with the trains, but I, I suppose we said we'd start off where we began this story with Garth Jempson and as you said, he's a wheelchair user unable to use public transport in the county, and we decided to find out a little bit more about his story and um, I suppose first off, I headed down to Rath new to where he lives and we I met up with him and his family and we had a quick chat about the situation so here's Garrett's mother Breda with her story Declan. I'm a very independent person but I'm afraid all my independence has been taken from me because I cannot get up and say to Garrett Garrett let's go for the bus today for to go Dunleary Bray or somewhere nice because I have to give 24 hours notice, boat train and bus. My husband passed away three years ago. I was had a nursing him the best I could. And I thought when I'd settled down a little bit, that life would get much better. But my life only got worse. I go for little walks. But, and I thank God I'm able to do everything for myself. And... I would just like to be able to live, but I'm afraid I can't because there's no way of getting anywhere. We can't go out on a whim. We can do nothing. We're just in our home. And that is it. We could go for a walk uh, over the road, up the port road, over the village. So I can't do anything else, like, you know, and my whole life is upside down. I only wish to live a normal life like anyone else. To be able to get up and go out and do my thing. But we can't. As you can hear there from Breda, her life really has been turned upside down, Declan. Um, it's, it's putting a stop to her life. And while I was down there, I, I spoke to Gareth, and um, he's really, really annoyed about the situation that he's in and how his life has been affected by it. I've been trying to use bus Aaron for about five or six years and things haven't changed for me. There's four routes in Ireland that's wheelchair accessible and that's not good enough for me. And I need answers from bus Aaron. Why, why are they making excuses? I just want answers. They do say that I train 24 hours, which I think is a load of rubbish because of a nice day, me and my mammy could get up and say we're going to Dublin, but we can't. And I'm just getting fed up with this now and I need answers. There you go, Declan. Four routes in Ireland that are wheelchair accessible on bus Aaron, as Gareth said. And you can understand, I suppose, his level of anger. 
Um, so we decided then we'd head up to Bray where I met with John Doyle. Now, Declan, you may remember John Doyle. He's been, been campaigning for equal access to the bus fleet since the early 90s. He was part of the protest that, in fact, forced Dublin Bus in the mid-90s to introduce wheelchair ramps into their fleet of buses. And one of the areas that particularly annoys him is the fact that you have to book 24 hours in advance if you want to get access to the buses. Here's what John had to say about it. The whole notion of having to phone 24 hours in advance is a nonsense. I mean, it means that as a person with a disability, I have to have my life organised around notif- notifying a transport, a public transport for a provider uh, that I want to do something 24 hours in advance. Now, I would ask the listeners, you know, how often have you gone out, say, for a meal and the uh, the main meal has been delayed because the, something happened in the kitchen or whatever? Well, if that happens for me and I miss the bus going back or the train going back, then uh, I'm left until the following day or to get a taxi because that's what 24 hours means to them. I have to tell them exactly when I'm going and exactly when I'm coming home. And I, I think the, the other thing that I would say is that what the what CAE as a company have got really good at is they, they rather than fix the issues and, and remedy the problems, what they've got good at is that they produce people and their job effectively is to, if I make a complaint, to ring me to apologise to tell me that it won't happen again but nothing changes the system stays the same uh, the following day I could run into exactly the same problem and get the same phone call so rather than fix it what they've done is they've professionalised excuses yeah so 24 hours you have to ring up 24 hours before you go out I don't know, do you have to ring up um, a cinema say hi uh, uh, Garrett uh, and uh, John will be going to the cinema tomorrow 24 hours can you fit us in or go to a restaurant or go to a yeah. bar or something. you ring up 24 hours to get on the bus is it and then what happens if you get to Hey, Declan. <laughs> you can't get the bus back. So, yeah, we decided then to take a look at the trains and uh, down to Arkle we went to Councillor Miriam Murphy. Um, she uses the trains to get to and from council meetings in Wicklow Town and she feels that the system in place is completely wrong. I can see why they need notice, but I think it's wrong that they need, need notice. There is two sides to it. Do you know what I mean? You're safeguarding yourself by letting them know, you know, that you are there. But nobody else has to let them know that they're going to be on the train. For me personally, I'd rather know they know and, you know, and be sure of my safe journey wherever I'm going. But I think it's still wrong. And it is it is letting them off the hook. There you go, letting them off the hook. So we went back to Rathnew and back to Garth. And again, he has another situation on the train this time. On the same route that Councillor Miriam Murphy uses, the Wicklow to Arklow line. Here's what happened to him. I had a friend that invited me to Arklow for dinner. I rang 24 hours ahead. So I went in to Wicklow to get the train. There was nobody in the train station. Everywhere was locked up. And um, the train driver had to get off the train and help me onto the train. And I felt a bit embarrassed about that. It's important, I suppose, Declan, for listeners uh, to realise that even if Garth does try and book 24 hours in advance to get on the 133, that doesn't mean that he'd actually be able to get on the bus because, as I said before, Bus Air and only have four wheelchair accessible routes across the network of buses. Now, they have hundreds of routes around the country. So if you think about that, that's hundreds of people who are wheelchair, who are wheelchair bound, who are unable to access the public transport system. And I was down with Gareth in Rathnew. I spoke with Lawrence Howey and he's a coordinator with Sunbeam House who's been working with Gareth on this and what he's found out about Bus Aaron's accessibility for wheelchairs here is what he has to say so since i've been uh, helping gareth look into this accessibility uh, with bus erin and public transport i've been quite shocked to find out uh, that how inaccessible transport really is for people who use wheelchairs um i mean big companies like bus erin they disguise their accessibility stance by throwing out big numbers such as 60% of their vehicles are accessible, which is true, but we've discovered that less than 1% of their routes are accessible. So 
the more we look into it, the more we're kind of shocked. And then obviously they've got this ridiculous 24-hour policy which really makes the routes inaccessible uh, or very impractical anyway. And sometimes even on the trains, you phone ahead and the guys are still not meeting the people with who need assistance to get on the trains. So that rule in itself as well is... It's, it's one rule for people who use wheelchairs and the able-bodied community get another rule. And yet they're either paying the same ticket or the other guys are using their travel pass if they can. So there you have it, Declan. Bus, Aaron, with buses that look like they're fully wheelchair accessible, yet in the majority of cases... They can't use them. They can't be used. And also, another point that Gareth and Lawrence pointed out to me was that as the bus service gets better for able-bodied people with the likes of Wi-Fi now and buses, more freak frequency, better, um, better, more comfortable journeys, it hasn't changed for anyone using a wheelchair in the past 10 years. Um, so the next step for them, they're currently trying to organise a meeting with the Accessibility Officer of Bus Air and together with the County Council to see what can be done. They haven't got a date yet for that meeting, Declan, so they really are looking to sit down and meet with them. And we're going to keep on it and see what comes of that meeting and if wheelchair users around the county will finally be able to get on public transport, Declan. But it, it's very frustrating for, uh, uh, you know, people who want to use it because it is this this pr -y approach. I mean, it's supposed to be public service, isn't it? But you can never get anybody from Bus Aaron to talk to you or anybody from from the National Transport Authority. Even we were trying to find out, was the um, about the ambulance the other day, was it coming from NACE to take away uh, a Blessington uh, woman who was out uh, playing football and that was in St. Pat's in Wicklow. Was the ambulance coming from NACE? So we asked them and they came with a statement that completely ignored the the question of was that ambulance coming from NACE? Yeah. And you sort of say, who are all these people who hide behind PRs? They're all in, they're all civil service jobs. Um, I don't know, maybe o over a hundred grand a, a year or something to, just to put a gloss on things where the poor people who are paying their wages are the people who are ignored and, and discommoded. And also, Declan, these are some of the most vulnerable people in our society as well. We have to remember that to also uh, Bus Aaron from a statement we got uh, earlier on in the year they do say in quarter four of this year they'll be launching the route 133 as an accessible route at limited stops once they carry out a risk assessment and suitability at certain stops on this route this will in turn provide an accessible service for Dublin City and Dublin Airport yeah that's a lot of shite right now the, the thing is that certain stops it has to be every stop exactly for everybody that's what access for all means and then you have to remember, Declan, there is also the issue that even if they do make this route a certain, at certain stops accessible, you still have to book 24 hours in advance. <laughs> so, so if you plan to, to head up to Dublin in the morning, <laughs> you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't wake up and say, I'm going to go to Dublin to, you know, this, this morning. Right. Thanks for that, Ronan. You're on the case anyway. Thanks we very are. much indeed.